help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and today we're going to be talking about CITV, the children's strand of programming from ITV. And unfortunately for anyone who's a fan, and I know many of you have been, CITV is going to be closing down, at least in its current form. This news just came today, I'm reading this from broadcast.co.uk or broadcastnow.co.uk. They're a great resource for what's going on in the broadcast world, and their article is CITV to close as ITV launches ITVX Kids. And I'm sure from that headline alone, many of you are probably thinking that this was, you know, a long time coming and that this this probably could have happened earlier, but let's read what it has to say. Linear Kids Channel closing in the autumn as streamer launches dedicated children's destination. ITV's dedicated children's channel CITV is set to close in the autumn as ITV streaming platform launches ITVX Kids. The channel, as in CITV, launched in 2006 with shows including Horrid Henry, but from July, ITVX Kids will launch over the school summer holidays as a dedicated destination for children's content on the streamer before CITV ends in the early autumn. Just to clarify, some might say 2006, I think it means as its own TV channel. Before then, sort of like CBBC was, it was merely a strand on the main ITV channel, just as CBBC was a strand on BBC One or BBC Two. So I'm guessing 2006 is when it got its own dedicated TV channel there. Interesting to see that it's um, ending in the early autumn. You know, they're launching ITVX Kids over the summer holidays. That makes sense. When kids are off school, they might spend some more time uh, consuming television content. But then why carry on CITV till the early autumn? My only guess is perhaps that maybe it's certain programs have already been made in advance. You know, they do all these things in advance to like prepare. So yeah, but so it seems they will run in tandem with each other for at least a month or two. Continuing on, it says the decision has been attributed to the changing ways in which children aged 6 to 12 consume content. ITV pointed to bar viewing data, which demonstrates that TV channels watched by 4 to 15 year olds has declined by 62% since 2019, while streaming viewing has increased by 30% in the same period. That is a staggering figure, a 62% drop in traditional TV, at least between, you know, four to 15 year olds. That is crazy. And, you know, granted, I know a lot of us, if you're my age, like mid twenties, when we were kids, there weren't the streaming sites that existed. You know, it was mainly the terrestrial stuff, CBBC, CITV, Milkshake, all that sort of stuff. And if you were lucky, if you could afford the satellite stuff, you could access Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, all that sort of stuff. But damn, 62% drop since 2019. That's only four years ago, you know. But I guess maybe a large part of that was due to the pandemic. You know, we were all stuck at home. Uh, some people um, were able to obviously save a bit more save a bit more money if they were being furloughed in some cases they started getting streaming services but that's such an interesting trend it says the free to air children's television channel CITV currently broadcasts daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. and its closure follows plans from the BBC to cut CBBC's linear channel in May last year yeah, and that was actually, I think, the very first of these discussion videos I did on this channel. So you can go and check that out if you like. That was announced back in May last year. God, we're coming up to nearly a year. But again, CBBC isn't going off linear channels as far as I'm aware until, you know, 2025 or sometime around then. But CITV apparently is going in the autumn. So they're, they're beating the BBC to the punch on that one. It does say, however, ITV will maintain a presence for children's shows on linear by offering some children's content in the early mornings on ITV2 from September, as well as the Little B preschool segment airing on ITVB. These will still be under the CITV brand, which has a rich heritage having begun 40 years ago and been responsible for hit shows such as SMTV Live. Lot to unpack there. Okay, so they're still going to maintain a CITV strand in some some capacity it is it, effectively we're going back to the old days where it's going to be a strand on another channel specifically in this case itv2 from september so that's going to be early in the mornings but again you know if you're going to say linear channels i'd argue children are more inclined to you know go for like your bbc1 itv the main thing i don't know how many kids are going to switch on to itv2 specifically just to check out these programs like early early in the morning as well i know younger kids are up early but it seems like an odd place to put it why not put it early mornings on the main itv channel and the little b preschool segment on itvb i don't watch itvb myself um they have a lot of reality programming don't they so i guess it's the preschool segment little b that sort of itv's attempt at cbb's like what the bbc has 
Although interesting to note, of course, CBBS, as far as we know, is sticking around as a main linear channel, like that is going to stay as is, whereas ITV's preschool offerings are just going to be a segment on one of its own channels. So I guess, is that conceding defeat to CBBS in a way? I don't know, kind of reads like it is to me. Also, isn't this a shame this is all happening in CITV's 40th anniversary? You know, this could have been a chance to properly celebrate, to go all out, to really celebrate the history and heritage of the CITV brand. You know, some would say CBBC is more iconic, but I know many people who were just as big a fans of CITV as well. But yeah, 40 years, what have you got to show for it? Well, it's going off linear TV. It's just, it's a shame. Continuing on, it says it's also understood that ITV is considering the long-term role and approach to commission content for kids, given the arrival of ITVX and at the end of the Young Audience's content fund, which it used to help fund titles such as Makeaway Takeaway and The Sound Collector. I didn't even know they had a Young Audience's content fund, but again, that's great, but I understand why they're sort of looking at the approach to commissioning this content for kids, because you've got to think, ITV, the BBC, all these channels that produce content for kids on linear television, they've got to compete with so much, you know, at one point it was just each other that was manageable then the satellite channels came in again your nickelodeon your cartoon network all that sort of stuff but now you've got the internet and so much content consumed by kids is on the internet whether that's on the streaming sites like netflix or disney plus or even just youtube you know i think we forget things like youtube and tiktok that is what kids are consuming content wise and yes a lot of those aren't necessarily television programs in the traditional sense but it's still visual media visual content that these kids are consuming as opposed to what is being commissioned and a lot of money spent on for traditional tv and particularly in the industry at the minute with all the like the cost of living crisis and the rising cost to produce these sorts of programs i've mentioned it before but there's a lot of production companies that are getting very nervous about commissioning new programs or even renewing old ones because they don't know if they're going to make the money on it. So I, I completely see why they're reevaluating it. It's a shame, but that's that's just the way we are at the minute. It does say in January 2022, the Young Audience's content fund came to a close following a three-year pilot, having supported 144 development projects. Again, I think any sort of fund like that, uh, particularly at this time in TV for Young Audiences, um, while some would say it's fruitless, I commend them for doing it nonetheless, really do. ITVX Kids will drop new content onto the service monthly and will bring together over 100 titles in a dedicated homepage with over 1,000 hours to choose from, almost doubling the current content offering. Yeah, there is some kids content offering on ITVX currently, isn't there? I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's under that ITV uh, Kids brand, though. Let's have a look, shall we? Yeah, so if you go on ITVX at the minute and you go on the categories, underneath there is a category for children, which is showing, you know, a wide variety of content, like just looking at my screen here, we've got... What's that? We've got 5050 Heroes, Athleticus, Be Cool Scooby Doo, the the remake of Bob the Builder. So, you know, there is a there is a fair amount of content on here like when you scroll down as well. There's a the, a wide variety of different programs on here, but it's basically saying that when ITVX Kids launches in July, you're going to get maybe its own category like it's going to be its own main banner at the top there saying ITVX Kids and it's going to double the content. I mean, that's a big that's a big tall order. The broadcaster has commissioned a further series of The Rubbish World of Dave Spud, which will air on ITVX Kids in 2024. Not familiar with this program whatsoever, maybe some of you are, I don't know, but you know, the fact that again, these programs are continuing, but on ITVX Kids alone. It says children will be able to access ITVX Kids within a child safe ITVX Kids profile. Oh, so they're doing it via profiles, okay. With collections of content ranging from comedy to game shows, live action, animation, and sport. Managing editor of ITVX Craig Morris said that ITVX Kids will be home to a wealth of content including new series, recognizable brands, and existing favorites for a range of ages, all in one child safe area. Children's shows such as Lloyd of the Flies, Lily's Driftwood Bay, and Mystery Lane will all join the content service alongside classic British brands such as the animated series of Mr. Bean, great show that is, and Bob the Builder. Obviously, as I say, the remake's on there, but hmm, is the is the original series going to be on there? You know, maybe it should. I did a whole video about Bob's music career back in the day. You should definitely go and check that out as well. So they're doing it via profiles then, which I think is similar to how Netflix does it at the minute, at least. So it's all about being content safe, you know, not being able to access things they can't. But depending on the age, like the older kids, they're smart, man. They could, they'll be able to find ways to access whatever they want, believe me. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting take, this. I mean, it makes sense on one hand, like we said with CBBC last year, you know, 
the whole fact is kids are consuming content in a more digital environment it is going more towards the streaming sites it's going more towards youtube it's going more towards tiktok and all the things like that so yeah kids are kids are watching things like cbbc citv a lot less and yes we all cry oh what a shame because we all loved it back in the day but as i always say it all depends on the generation. Again, in the 80s, 90s, noughties, streaming wasn't a thing. Satellite channels were only a thing for those who could afford it. You know, terrestrial TV was quite frankly the norm. And I don't doubt that there are still some kids today who do watch CBBC and CITV. I don't doubt that they exist. But it seems to be from all this data that's being gathered that the trend for them is going more in the streaming direction. So while some of us, you know, obviously those who are older will sort of decry this move, you know, as moving away from linear TV, we've got to keep in mind the context context we aren't the demographic anymore for these you know we're, we're older we have a fascination with you know tv broadcast history but we aren't the core demographic for these kinds of programs whereas the main demographic for these programs are moving gradually online so whilst it may feel a shame especially in citv's 40th anniversary i can't get over the timing of that how they picked the 40th anniversary year to do this but i do think going forward in the long term it might be a smart move for itv uh, obviously, they're going all in on ITVX, as we know. They want this to be their content hub for everything, not just kids' stuff. So it makes sense, but it's always a sad day when this comes. Again, CBBC, on the other hand, isn't going to be moving until, I think they said, like, at least 2025 at the earliest. So, you know, you're still going to have CBBC as its linear channel. CBBS, of course, is sticking around there. And obviously, new logos, new looks for those channels recently were announced or teased or whatever leaked whatever you want to call it i also did a video talking about that which you can check out the last little thing i want to touch on is obviously whilst i said this does make sense as a decision like you know content viewing is going more towards streaming and the digital stuff this is a massive blow for those who basically rely on linear or terrestrial television for their programs as I've stressed before in multiple videos, when it comes to, say, internet connection, for example, there are still big parts of the UK where internet is not up to snuff, quite frankly, with, say, some of the bigger cities or somewhere like that. So if your internet connection is not good and you're relying on, like, say, children's programs that you can only access with an internet connection or online, that's not a good start. And the other thing is cost. Now, of course, ITVX, the base service is free, watching with adverts and stuff like that. So you could argue that the, these kids' programs aren't necessarily going to be cut off. You know, you can just make an ITVX profile for free. And as long as your kids don't mind watching adverts, as I suppose they would do on the telly, then all's well. If you don't want adverts and all that sort of stuff, then obviously there's the premium model. And whilst it says new programs are going to be added to ITVX Kids every month after it launches, one thing that isn't clear at the minute is is this going to be like pre-existing stuff or is this going to be new series of shows that they've had and if that's the case if it is new series of shows that they've got is that going to be behind the itvx paywall which currently stands at the time of recording at 5.99 a month and if that's the case that's basically asking audiences to pay for a subscription service and again especially with times we're in at the minute there are a lot of families out there who will not be able to afford another streaming service they've got bigger things to prioritize whether that be food bills putting the clothes on the kids back etc so if if that new content is behind a paywall i think that's a big shame as well because then you're blocking children who might not have the resources to access these streaming sites who they won't be able to see it but again hopefully it will be on the free to air side of itvx but again this whole move to digital and streaming and an online based world of consuming traditional television it's, it's just a shame that it's happening at a time when not all of the UK has a good internet connection or has access to these facilities. You know, it should be happening in tandem or it should have begun happening. You know, ideally, you know, we're one of the most developed nations in all of Europe and we still haven't mastered getting good internet connection to everybody. I mean, it's laughable, quite frankly. But please let me know down in the comments below what do you think about this news about CITV closing down after 40 years? Are you absolutely gutted? Do you think this is the wrong decision? Do you think this is the right decision? Let me know all of those thoughts you have in the comments section down below. But if you enjoy this video as well, please leave a like on it. It really does help us out here on the channel. And if you enjoy what you heard and saw, then please do subscribe. We would love to have you aboard here with us at the AMTV Network. And we have two other channels as well. We've got AMTV Now for content around now. That's what I call music and music in general. And we have AMTV Who. And I'll give you three guesses what that channel's about. So go and check that out if you're interested. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show. 
And a special thank you to Macra, Hooks Media, Ben Freeman, Ethan Carberry Holt, The Broken Kit Sumanoid, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, DSTV New Zealand, and Dord Khan, our AMTV staff members.